This is the Notorious Vans Combi Bowl. Two 12 foot deep bowls separated by a shallow section and a nine foot nine inch transition. Reaching blazing speed, skateboarders execute grinds, slides, inverts, and throw massive airs above this spectacular yet unforgiving concrete marvel. It was this deep bowl competition that pretty much changed the face of modern vert skateboarding. Today, we celebrate its 10 year anniversary. This is the Vans Pool Party and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Master Keller here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to the city of Orange in beautiful Southern California. Band started nearly 50 years ago here in Orange County back in 1966. We're at the Van Skate Park and Combi Pool, which is a replica of the original Combi Pool that was located in the Pipeline Vert Skate Park in Upland, California in the 70s and early 80s. The Combi gets its name for the combination of the 12 foot deep round and square pools and a nine foot nine inch transition. After that pool was demolished in 1989, this form of skating and competition was pretty much dead until Vans resurrected the Combi at this 46,000 square foot skate park, the very first of its kind back in 1998. Now the inaugural pool party was held in 2005 and today we're celebrating the 10th anniversary. Two classes of competition that we're gonna see today. The legends, which include the very pioneers that skated in the original combi, names like Steve Caballero, Eric Nash, Steve Alba, and the eight-time champion, Mr. Miller Time himself, Chris Miller. Then the pro class, including past champions like Bucky Lassick, Rune Glifberg, Omar Hassan, Tristan Rennie, and the two-time champ, Brazilian Pedro Barros. The 10th edition of the Vans Pool Party is about to start, so we're gonna check in with Corbin Harris and the legend, the Birdman, Tony Hawk. Thank you, Sal. The format goes like this. Best of two runs, reverse order from the second run, scored out of 100. Tony, what are the judges gonna be looking for? Well, the judges are looking for the degree of difficulty, how high, how fast they go, mostly how they use the bowl, you know, not just doing half pipe routines and uh, consistency, you gotta stay on your board. That is most important in this event. Now let's throw it over to the fourth member of our team, Tina Dixon, for an update on our first event, the Legends Class. Well, for you at home, if any of you watched the Winter Olympics, specifically the snowboarding competitions, you most likely saw and heard many of the tricks that actually came from skateboarding. Specifically one, the McTwist, and it was invented by a man named Mike McGill. Mike is actually competing here in the Legends competition, and I asked him about that trick earlier. He said he had had it in his mind for about six months before finally landing it. And that was the summer of 1984. Since then, the McTwist has gone on to transcend decades, generations, and sports, including snowboarding. Now, joining Mike in the competition is a list of other skaters that have made major contributions to the skateboarding world. Guys, this event is extremely rich in history. Thank you, Tina. Before we get into the legends with the likes of Steve Caballero and Chris Miller, we are gonna check out the combi pool, the course preview with Mr. Bucky Lasek. Hi, this is Bucky Lassick, and welcome to the 10th annual Vans Pool Party. This is your course preview. Exiting the shallow into the round. Big old chunky coping. Take it to the air. We'll lean air. 50-50 around the corner. Headed 
back into the round. Smith grinding around into the shallow here. Let's throw it back to Sal Masekela. We've talked a lot about the banners that hang high in this skate park, very reminiscent to other professional sports leagues. But one name that has appeared time and time again in the rafters is my friend Chris Miller. Eight times his name has graced the championship banner. That is eight times in a nine-year history of the event. In fact, there are those, both fans and his fellow competitors alike, that really feel that everyone else out there is simply competing for second place since Chris's dominance in this bowl has been solidified time and again over the years. In the Legends class, Chris Miller, AKA Miller Time, is an icon above the rest. I stopped competing when I was 22 thinking, I'm old, I better develop a career in the industry. And I had no idea at the time that I would still even be riding a board at 47, let alone at the same level I was when I was 22. I started 10 years old. I've been competing since I was about 12 and kind of just came up through the ranks. When you think about skateboards, you kind of think about this California lifestyle, and Miller truly embodies that. He can surf, he can skate. Everything seems to just come really, really natural to him. He just has the unique lines and the unique style. He was one of the guys that most skated the original one of these, and he just knows what to do with it. I've been skating this since it started. It's been 10 years, and I ended up winning that first year, and then I won again and again, and so I've won it every year except for two years. As far as I'm concerned, the contest here is for second. Nobody's better than Miller. Even though I've been skating this my whole life, I always find it refreshing. For me, this is skateboarding. I would compare it for surfing, it's like pipeline. It's a heavy, heavy spot. You pack this many people in this small of a place, you have this arena feel to it. Being in the middle of all that energy, it definitely gets the adrenaline going. They ding the bell and you just start going for it. I want to go off. I want to like skate as hard as I can. I want to go crazy, I want to go big. Because this is a big pool and there's a lot going on and it, it's fast. The faster he can go, the higher he can go, the happier he is. I find myself having to be like, okay, take it down a notch. I think it's one of those things, if you love what you do and you keep doing it, it's gonna keep working. Tony, why is Chris so dominant? Well, he's definitely got the lines. He's got the experience. You know, he grew up in the original combi pool, but the way that he uses the pool, it's not that he's doing the hardest tricks, it's that he is linking them together so seamlessly. The legends, which include the very pioneers that skated in the original combi pool in Upland, California in the 70s and early 80s, include Steve Caballero, Eric Nash, Steve Alba, and eight-time champion, which we just saw, Chris Miller. The format for the Legends, jam format, best score out of 100 wins. And straight up, we are into Eddie Elgato Elguera, 52 years young. Eddie was one of my first skate heroes. I thought he was the most innovative at the time with tricks like that, Elguerio. I mean, that's his signature move, and that had, was never done before he started doing it. Tony Magnuson back in next. Sweetie, semi-retired professional skateboarder and part owner of Osiris Shoes. And Tony skated the original combi. He's no stranger to these pools, and uh, he looks like he's been working on his lines here, getting, using the whole bowl, using the, going from shallow to round, and uh, the tricks that he used to do right there, lip slide, crail. Really using every inch of the ball. That's a solid run. Nicky Guerrero doing it for Denmark, coming out of Copenhagen. Been a mentor for Rune Glyphberg for so many years as well. And a legendary European skater, one of the first European Bones Brigade members. He and I used to tour in the late 80s, and uh, he's always been smooth, always stylish, and, and uh, he's got a bag of tricks. There we go, eggplant in the round, get some speed up. Transfer in the shallow, even though that looks a little low, that's not an easy transfer. It was a solid run by Nicky Guerrero and one of your old teammates, Mike McGill, who invented the McTwist. Rocking the Bones Brigade shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it real here, Mike. 
And uh, Mike had a rough one a couple years ago in Bondi. He uh, he fell and got knocked out, and I think it, it kind of gave him a pause in his in his skating and his competition. But he is back in full force. Look at that. He's not holding back at all. We're in the middle of the Legends competition, and here are our current leaders. In the number one position with an 81.67, it's Nicky Guerrero coming out of Copenhagen, Denmark. Out of Sweden, in second spot, Tony Mag with an 81, and in third, Mike McGill. As we go straight into the man himself, the inventor of the Christ Air, Christian Hussoy. And uh, that leaderboard could definitely change here with Christian's run. He's so smooth. He's still got that iconic style, even just on this front side grinds. Holmes does not let up. He's been through a couple injuries in the last year or so, but still skating strong. He's got all different lines in here, and that's what it's about as well. Finishing off there with an 81 flat, Christian Hassoy. Straight into Eric Nash, 46 years young. And Eric is always consistent here. I feel like he's the dark horse of this event. You know, he, he always skates well. He's got the good lines. He does big airs, and somehow just kind of gets unnoticed, but this might be his year. Eric, a regular in the World Cup skating events. Back-to-back -back tricks here. And I think you're right, Tony. He might be coming through with a really good score. Feeble on the other side. Eric Nash ending up with an 83.33 as Steve Caballero drops in. And Cab is always one of the favorites here at the, this event. He's won it a couple times. He knows this pool. He's got some good transfers, and he's always solid. Look at that, Cab. Right there, El Gariel, so textbook. These guys are, you know, a lot of them are doing the same lines that they were doing in the mid 80s. And right there, Caballero, you can't, you can't deny Steve Caballero doing Caballero. Eight time winner of the event, Chris Miller. Can he do it again, Tony? Well, Chris does not hold back. It's all or nothing. And uh, he's, he knows this pool like the back of his hand. I mean, he can really skate it with his eyes closed. And look at, he always is right on the edge of the pools, you know, right here. He's in the air, almost landing the shallow end, still keeping his speed up. I, he's, he's tough to beat. Backside air transfer, front side. Fast plant, that's right there. All the lines they were doing in the mid 80s. And he's got even on the hip there, the finger, they call it the Duncan, and that's enough for the win. That is the winning run, and we are gonna throw it down to our fourth member, is with the winner, Chris Miller himself. Well, Chris, you've already won this event so many times before. So what makes this win different from the others? Well, you know, I mean, this is just being the anniversary. It's pretty, pretty cool. And for me, it's been a long run. Like, I never expected this, you know? My career as a pro was in my 20s, basically. And I have to say, when I was 22, I never thought I would be 47 and still skating at this level. So I just love this bowl. This is the best crowd in skateboarding. It's hard to miss it, you know? You want to be here and you want to be part of it. And it's special for the crowd to watch you guys in the legends skate. So many people that influence skateboarding in just monumental ways. How special is it for you? It's it's super special. And you know, to give you an example, Steve Alba was my mentor back at the original Upland Combi Pool. And you know, watching him skate and skating in the same event to him, you know, as him, he's a guy I looked up to when I was 12 years old and was just like, wow, Salva. And honestly, a lot of the lines in this bowl, a lot of the, the different tricks, Salva started. You know, and then I continued, and then now I'm seeing all these young guys, you know, carry the torch. It's pretty cool. Yeah, well, and it's another win. A great show tonight, Chris. Congratulations. Thanks so much. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Tina. Chris Miller, Tony, now it's nine-time champion. What an unbelievable feat. It's like Grosso said, they're just shooting for second here. Um, but it was exciting to see Eric Nash up on the podium, too, in third place, and Cab got second. I mean, those guys are still killing it. Hasoy, Magnuson. Mike McGill and rounding it out in eighth place, Eddie Elgato. Let's throw it back to Sal Masekela. Like many of the things they do, really everything they do, Brazilians are passionate about their skateboarding. It's part of their culture, and they pride themselves on having some of the top skaters in the world and are always a force to be reckoned with in all disciplines, especially vert. Now, one of the most dominant is young Pedro Barros, a very powerful Brazilian who attacks the bull at high speeds and with ferocious abandonment. In this arena, Pedro is a warrior and a crowd favorite, and this dude would like nothing more than to add his name to a third banner.
where I grew up in Florianópolis, Brazil. One of my dad's best friends is kind of an uncle to me. He was a big bowl skater back in the 80s in Brazil. So him together with some other friends, they built a bowl, and I was only three, so that was my first contact with a bowl. So bowls have been in my life my whole life. It's always been my passion, you know? I always loved to just be able to feel the grind on the block coping, and at the same time, you can create your lines and you can do the airs. Like, it just brings everything together. Pedro skates at 110% every time, and it seems to me that he's one of those guys that takes all that energy in and just turns it into power for himself. It's like skating with emotion. Every time a Brazilian comes to this contest, they just want to show really the max that they have. Like, for a bunch of us, it's our chance. So, you know, we got to kind of go big. We got to try to do things different. We've got to put all of our effort to it. Well, we used to sit there and dream of, you know, going two feet out. Pedro and those guys dream of going 12. And like, that is insanity to me. But to them, it's breakfast. <laughs> It feels like this thing is a war. Like, we're coming in to skate with the best skaters of the world and one of the gnarliest bowls in the world. And you got to give it all of yourself, all that you have. And yeah, let's see what happens tomorrow. Pedro Barros, a real inspiration for Brazilians. He's been dominating the skateboarding scene and specifically in pool skateboarding over the last five years. Right now, we're gonna throw it down to Tina. Well, when I first walked into this park, one of the things that really stood out to me were those banners hanging above the bowl. Now that is to honor all the champions that have won here before and give notice to them. And it's also one of the things that make this event that much more unique. Now, one of our favorites, Pedro Barras, told me when he first came to this event and saw those banners, he said, wow, it would be really cool to have my name up there. Well, Pedro's name is up there twice, but last year he didn't even make the final, so he will be looking for some redemption. Now, keep in mind, it is going to be getting very loud in here. It is already loud, but Chris Miller told me that you can use that to your advantage, feed off the energy of the crowd, and hey, for 2015, your name may just end up on one of those banners, guys. Thank you, Tina. Pedro Barros is very likely to get back on one of those banners. Tony, who else are you predicting to be in that top three? Well, I, I, Tristan Rennie is still a favorite, but uh, Tom Shar is killing it here and uh, really coming to his own in the pool skating, so don't count him out. I'm Corbin Harris alongside Tony Hawk, and we are ready to get underway with this pro competition. 10 of the best pool skateboarders in the world. The format goes like this. It's a jam format, one minute time limit per run, four runs total, average of best two scores, and it's scored out of 100. It's really like a, a more experienced level of skateboarder versus a younger skateboarder here. There's definitely strategy here because you gotta, you gotta put together two solid runs. It's not just about that one special big run. You gotta back it up with another one. Corey Juno is straight in, wasting no time at all. Really had his breakout year uh, in 2014, coming third. And look at that, out of the gate, alley in the round, into a McTwist, backside Smith. This run is jam-packed, full of tricks, no setups, heel flip indie. I can't believe how it just, it just makes it look so easy. Frontside Ooh, nose grind yeah, around that tight corner. That's the banger right there, for sure. Solid run so far. Oh, into a backside blunt slide. That's the Chris Miller special. 5-0 around the corner. Frontside invert. Good start right there. Moving into first place with an 83.67. That's Corey Juno. Up next, coming out of Cardiff, California. 15 years old. Youngest ever X Games Big Air medalist. This is Tom Shaw. And Tom's known more for his half-pipe skating, mega ramp skating, obviously the guy that did the first 1080, but look at how he's adapted to pool skating now. Big McTwist in the round. 
Big stale fish around the corner. That's no joke right there. That is completely changing your direction in midair. Front side tail slide. Right there, just uh, everything in the round. Got it done, got his speed up, back in the square here and using the whole pool. It seems like he's really worked on it this year, going for a 720. Oh, wow. And that setup too counts for a lot. He set up from the finger into the round for a 720. I mean, just a 720 in the pool, especially back in the combi days, would have been unheard of. That is gonna move Tom Shaw into the number one position with a 87. Coming up next, we have Chris Russell coming out of Hermosa Beach. This is probably the first time I've seen this guy skate with pads. Yeah, that is rare, but uh, he's so exciting to watch. Everything is on edge or into a disaster like that to the point where it's almost like he doesn't mean to hang up, but he just has to. How much more does that make it difficult, Tony? I mean, that you know, hitting the bottom of your board on the way in is firstly dangerous, but also can slow you down. And the way he does it, it's so fast, it's like a regular landing to him. But I mean, and I've never really seen him put entire runs together either, so uh, he's been working on it. He's, you know, he's obviously putting some effort into it. He's definitely been working on it. That is an 80.33, which moves him into third position. Coming up next, we have Omar Hassan, one of the more experienced skaters in the mix, 42 years young, coming out of Costa Mesa. He has won this competition many times before, and he's trying to back people away. He's got one of his signature maneuvers coming up, I <laughs> think, Tony. To, he likes to use the whole perimeter of the pool, but I, I commend Omar for staying in the pro division. You know, he could have moved up to one of the other classes because of his age and his experience and the era he's from, but he stays in here. He's, you know, this is where it's the toughest competition by far. Still trying to push himself through. Here he goes, Omar Hassan. 50-50 around the corner. Right there, big Madonna, and here we go. All around the edge, a lot of speed. What is he doing here? Nearly rolling oh, out of into control. Lip slide. Wow, that was about halfway up around the uh, round ball there. What kind of points do they score with the judges? Um, well, I think, I mean, that's obviously gonna score better than a regular lip slide, but it does take a lot of time for him to roll out and get all the way around. You know, that's enough time to do a couple other tricks in the pool, so I don't really know how it evens out, to be honest. But this is a solid run. I mean, this is, he's linking tricks here. He's keeping his speed up. Transfer. Oh, here we go. Manual. Holding on into to it. it. Nice, tail slide into the corner. And he likes that, hands up, the crowd goes wild. He is a favorite here at the Vans Combi Pool. That is Omar Hassan with an 81.67, moves into third position, pushing Chris Russell out. About to drop in, coming out of Copenhagen, Denmark. This is Rune Glyfberg, huge frontside air. Rune has one of the best styles and is so good in the bowls and in transition and uses his vert knowledge and, and his difficult tricks, but can put them into some of the most difficult terrain as well, like that heel flip front side air and then straight into a grind. I mean, he just, he knows how to skate transitions. Really moving around this pool like he knows it. Yeah, just that right there, like grinding onto the hip that is no small feat. Whoa, sliding out there on the tail slide. Rune Glyfberg, score 80.33. He is in fifth position. Up next, coming out of Foreignopolis, Brazil. He goes so hard. And you watch him right now, he puts everything into it. He said it earlier in the teaser. He wants to come here and make an impression. This is Pedro Barros. Pedro almost gets too much speed for this pool. Look at that front side air all the way into the round. He was just holding on there, Tony, out of that front side air off the hip. Yeah, you see when he comes in and uh, he comes in in that squat because he's about to, his board is about to hang up on the coping. Most people can't hold a squat. He gets speed out of it, even there on that melon five. <laughs> you know, he's, he's all the way down and then right back up with all the speed that he needs. 
Oh, right there, going a little too crazy, but uh, solid run up to that point. Pedro Boros, 82 flat, moves into third position, knocking out Omar Hassan. Up next, we have, at 42 years young, Bucky Lasek. Four times due to a vert winner, three times winner of the Vans pool party into a McTwist. Look at that, backside tailside in the shallow end, right up over the hip. He's using every single transfer he can and doing some of the hardest tricks in between. That's the reason Bucky's always been on top. And with consistency like this, no oh, wonder. No. He's had 10 X Games gold medalists. 10 seconds left on the clock for Bucky. <laughs> Bucky going for the, going back to his 90s tricks there. Impossible tail grab just for the crowd. Going straight into last year's winner, 17 years old, Tristan Rennie. 2014 Vans Pool Party winner. Anyone would love that title uh, on their resume. And at 17 years old, he's done well for that. If he can put it, I guess, if he can put together a line like he did last year, I mean, he's going to be on the podium for sure. But Pedro is unpredictable. You never know what he's going to come up with or uh, what he's going to invent in the middle of the finals. Yeah, he seems to really Whoa. push it. Like he was trying to front some 180 out of that, but he just got stuck. But even so, a frontside feeble through the corner is, is worth a lot of points. This is a solid run by Tristan so far. Blunt slide. Yeah, the end there kind of tapered out, but um, it was still solid. Ali oop into that tight Ali corner was corner. very tough. The crowd likes what they see there. Let's check out the current leaderboard. In the number one position is Tom Shah with the 87, Tristan Rennie, 86.33. And in third place, Corey Juno, 83.67. Score is average of two best scores. So this second run will really shake up the leaderboard. Now we are getting underway with Alex Perelson, 24 years old, out of San Diego. Alex has been on a tear recently, especially skating pools. Look at him just blasting in that round right there, and then this alley-oop 5-0, oh no. That's the other thing about Alex, though, it's all or nothing. <laughs> he does not hold back, ever. Did you think kids like Alex were gonna come through and do the 900s as soon after you did it? Yeah, I feel like that's the evolution of skating. Once you know something's possible, then that's what you're striving for, and you're gonna expand on it, which we've seen, obviously, Tom Shard did the 1080. Up next, we have Joshua Rodriguez, 23 years old. Joshua, in 2013, his first ever top spot winning the Wellington Bowlerama competition. And he's one of the most consistent skaters I've seen out here in pools. Frontside blunt, look yeah, at that. I, he's got the speed and he's got the technique. Everything is difficult. Look at that, frontside 5 to fake you around the corner. Into a less twist, it's like, this is just one hard trick after the other right there. Oh no. Failing on the burn twist, but uh, it was a good run up to that point. I think that's going to be a good score. His first run, 76.67, and his run number two, a 76. Overall score, 76.34 for Joshua Rodriguez. About to drop in right now, we have Corey Juno, 16 years old, coming out of National City, currently in third position, 2013. He had his best place in third, straight into a frontside nose grind. Oh, and the frontside blunt slide is just standard issue for these guys now. In the round pool, no less. That's, that's very difficult in those round walls to keep your tail sliding smoothly. And look at that, backside Smith into the shallow, keeping his speed up. Heel flip Indy. Big one foot out. And almost done here. Whoa, board slide to fakey. 360 board slide. Not sure if that's going to be a big score, but it's a throwback for sure to the days of the, the original Commie Bowl in Upland, California. And a frontside board slide. He's kind of getting some 80s in there. His run score, an 83 flat. 
combined with his first run and second run, his overall score now is an 83.34 as Tom Shah drops in, 15 years old. Tom going big with a big melon five right there in the round. Oh, look at that. Kick from Indy into the square. He stepped things up there, was just doing a backside air. Decided to throw a kickflip in there. Unfortunately, just coming off there, Tom Shaw. His overall score now is 79.34. If Tom can get another solid run in there, he's got a shot at the podium. He's got a shot at winning. One of Hermosa Beach's finest, Chris Russell, 18 years old. This is his second run. He just looks like he's holding on for everything at the moment, Tony. He is. He's exciting to watch. You never know if he's, he's going to take a big spill or if he's going to make it, and it's, it's fun either way. Right there, boneless disaster in the corner. No one is doing that. I don't think anyone ever did that before. <laughs> Pumping around the small section. Front side, invert. Oh, that's what he fell on on his first run, so uh, looking good. Oh, wow, look at that. Nose grind to revert. Even when he's got no speed, he's still doing super hard tricks on the lip. Chris Russell with an unbelievable run, holding on to it. His overall score now is an 83.33. And he looks pretty happy with that. Coming up next, we have Omar Hassan. Looking for Costa Mesa. He's not only a bowl skater, he skates vert, he skates street, he skates absolutely everything. Omar is a veteran. He definitely could be in a, in a different division, holding it down, but he wants to compete against the pros and he wants to still stick it to these kids. And I noticed he didn't clear out the deck here on this run, so a uh, new strategy? Feeble to fakey. Oh, oh no. Going for a rewind around the corner there. Just losing his footing with that one. First run, 81.67. And his second run, 70.33, which makes his overall score 76 flat. As Rune Glifberg out of Copenhagen, Denmark, 41 years old. Rune is so powerful in the bowl. And he gets the speed, he gets the difficulty. If he can put it together, he's, he's one to contend with always. Oh, big heel flip. Just, just missing the grab there. He made that in his first run. The 12 times X Games gold medalist Rune Glifberg first entered his first pro contest in France in 1990. He's been doing this for a long time as Pedro Barros, the Brazilian, is about to roll in for his second run. Here he goes, Tony. And Pedro never holds back. Look at that. So much speed, huge alley-oop. Unbelievable. Checking his landing even after, he, <laughs> after he's rolled away. It seems like sometimes when he's grinding all those tiles, he's even trying to slow himself down. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there, there is a point of, of too much speed, perhaps, in this bowl. Because the transitions are not that big, but uh, he's no stranger to this size and this speed. Whoa, looking a little lost there with the fake Yali. Now, this, it's tricky because if he has just one good run, that's not going to be enough. He's got to have two solid runs. He fell off at the exact same point uh, as his first run, Tony. Hey, it just looked a little lost there, and uh, it looked like he was trying to catch up, went into the corner and just lost it, but... Uh, here comes Bucky Lasik, who definitely has a routine that he has in mind. He's not just ad-libbing here. Bucky, alley -oop, backside ollie. Whoa, getting a little wobbly onto the hip. Staying in the bowl, though. Oh, front side, blunt side into the shallow end, and that's, that's going to be hard to come back from. Bucky has two falls now. His first run, 76.33, and his second run, 72.67 which leads his overall score is a 74.50 as Tristan Rennie drops in for his second run, 17 years old. He's the reigning champion of the event last year, the 2014 winner. And uh, his, if he can get another run like his first run, he's gonna be up there on the podium for sure. 
And it looks like he's kind of playing it safe here in the square. A couple basic errors, disaster. Whoa, getting into the hip there. And he's gonna have to step up his difficulty. Oh, there you go, McTwist. Oh, that's it. So uh, we have yet to see him do another good run. Corey Juno at the top of the leaderboard in the pro final. Two runs down, but we have two to go in the pro finals at the Combi Pool at the Vans Skate Park. Let's throw it back to Sal Masakela. Vans have been at the forefront of skateboarding since they began in 1966. Street, park, vert, and of course, bowl. But as bowl skating saw a decline in both competitions and venues and pretty much seemed dead, the Van Doren family wanted this form of skating to live on, so they built this park, the very first of its kind, back in 1998. They have since built many more around the world, but it really all started here. And a few years later, this would become the very best bowl event ever, now celebrating its 10th anniversary. From their beginning in 1966, Vans has deep-seated roots in skateboarding and Orange County, California. For the past nine years, Vans has been celebrating the very best bowl skaters in the world at the Vans pool party. Competitors include not only the pros of today, but across the generations, including those from each decade dating back to the early 70s. When the sport gained notoriety at the original skate park in Upland, California, which featured the original combi pool. After the destruction of the Pipeline Park in the late 80s, the only place that skaters could call their own were illegal pools and makeshift backyard ramps. Vans and the Van Doren family never wavered in their commitment to the sport. By building this 46,000 square foot facility in Orange, California in 1998, and reincarnating a replica of the original combi, where it still stands today and plays host to this, the best competition of the year. The original combi first built in the 70s, the design transcending generations. Legends and pros come to celebrate this pool party every year to the roar of a zealous crowd. Now in its 10th year, Steve Van Doren hosts the world's best, and there is nothing more coveted that holds more prestige than to have your name raised to the rafters and hang proudly amongst the very best on one of these banners, here above the combi at the Van Skate Park. Before we get into the third run, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Well, you can't come to a Vans event without seeing Steve Van Doren on the barbecue. I mean, this is truly hands-on. It is, it is, absolutely. I always said if I sit in the stands and watch everything, I get to talk to two people. Out here, I get to talk to thousands and say hello and thank them for coming, enjoy the great athletes that we have out here in the pool party each year, or any sport that Vans involved in. Now, this is the 10th year anniversary for the for pool party. What does that mean to you? Well, when we first built this, which is 18 years ago, I don't know why it took us eight years to do the first event, but I think because bowl riding wasn't back in back in those days. But from the very first one, it was very special when you have legends as well as the top pros today. It mixes a, a lot of different generations. You have young kids here all the way to kids that, that like me in our 50s. Yeah, it's unbelievable to see all the generations here and skating the bowl all at the same time. Well, what do we have here on the grill? Because I want a little, I want a little food. Right, no problem. We got hot dogs. We got Oscar Mayer hot dogs. We always, I'm sorry, Farmer John's. Come on over this way. We also have some sausages we're making up here, some quesadillas, but we bring in and out burgers. I used to have to do a thousand hot dogs and 1,200 hamburgers. I make it easier on myself. I brought in and out another famous, legendary Southern California company to go along with Vans. Well, Steve Van Doren, always a staple at the Vans event. I'm going to let you get back to work. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. Corey Juno at the top of the leaderboard in the pro final. Two runs down, but we have two to go in the pro finals at the Combi Pool at the Van Skate Park. Let's throw it back to Sal Masakela. Thank you, Corbin Might. Uh, what's your favorite Vans pool party, friends? Past or present? Uh, do you have an image or story that you want to share from this amazing event from the past 10 years? Why don't you reach out to us, huh? Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or you can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com, where we'll give you even more behind-the-scenes content. Plus, you can download the Red Bull TV app to watch this show and catch up on all episodes and all seasons. You 
are, of course, watching the Red Bull Signature Series, and this is the band's pool party. Thank you, Sal. This skate park was built in 1998. We are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Vans pool party. Two runs down for the pros. Let's get into the third. Corey Juno is up, 16 years old. Whoa, blasting. Really, he was really taking chances there. I mean, that was about a 10-foot frontside air, and uh, there's not a lot of landing zone in a pool this small for that size air. He's, he's going for it. His overall score is 83.34 at the moment as Tom Shah with a huge 540. And Tom just being consistent here, kickflip Indy into the square, going around the corner. He's really solid. He's using the whole pool, keeping his speed up, doing difficult tricks. I mean, this this could be Tom's year. Whoa, I big. love that front side Alley ollie. Hoop. Yeah, front side ollie on the finger. One of the hardest positions to do it. Straight into it, what's he got? Oh, wow, 720 in the square. Unbelievable. Into an alley-oop. I think this is the run that he was looking for, Tony. And he really mixed it up. You know, with his first run, he did 720 in the round. That one was, was different tricks, harder tricks. 720 in the square. I mean, between those two runs, that's gonna be tough to beat. 86.67 helps Tom Sharp move into the number one position. Chris Russell dropping in with a backside ollie. Frontside grind around the tight end. Tony, nice. uh, ollie, I haven't seen that one before. <laughs> right into a signature Chris Russell move of Texas plant disaster. And then he's got all the hand plants, he's got the foot plants, he's got the disasters. The judges love that stuff. And it's something different for them as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, wow! Just going for it so hard that he exploded his skateboard. <laughs> wow. Going down, I hope he's okay. Just going to check on him right now. Chris Russell with a snap board in his hands. He looks a little shocked, Tony. He is a warrior. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that happens. You know, considering how much he does disasters, it's surprising it doesn't happen to him all the time. The crowd like Chris Russell. He's a skater, skater. Helps him move into the second position. Just making sure he's all right there. That was a heavy slam. <laughs> that, was, that was an explosive out. Going from one explosive skater to another, Omar Hassan. He's trying to clear everyone out again. What has he got in his bag of tricks? One of the more experienced skaters, Tony. Yeah, absolutely. Omar kind of came on the tail end of the original combi era, um, the Upland Skate Park. He got into the skate scene when it was more about half pipes and ramps, but he never lost the idea that he wanted to skate pools, and so he would always find them, and he rips in them. I mean, look at he's got the corners, he's got the transfers. Were you guys able to give him a couple of runs? I don't remember if he skated the original Upland. He must have, though. Feeble to fakie in the tight corner. Getting all mini ramp up there. Omar Hassan, solid run. Frontside heel flip, ending. <laughs> That's <laughs> and half the he, time. He is going to like that one as he waves to the crowd. This is where the magic happens. Rune Glyphberg dropping in. And Rune's had a, he's had a couple of hardships here on his runs. He missed the heel flip last time. Looks like he's going to not try it this time so that he can stay on. One of the smoothest styles in skateboarding is that front side tail grab. Oh, big McTwist. We don't see Rune do that very much. No, he's really pulled that out of his bag of tricks. Backside 50, Ooh. throwing it to tail. That is not an easy trick right there. Oh, nice. Oh, going for backside tail side, shove it through the corner. It looks like, I thought he was being conservative, but he was not. He was not holding back there. His run score, 82. 
moves into sixth position. Not exactly what Rune Glithberg would want. This is one of the guys that we need to watch out for. He is going to pull out all stops at a Foreignopolis, Brazil. This is Pedro Barros. Oh, huge stale fish alley -oop. Pedro needs to stay on both of these runs here. Oh, going for it again. We haven't seen him do that. Stalefish 270. It's amazing how quickly Pedro can pick up his speed again. You know, right there, he kind of lost it. He had a little shallow end bobble and then immediately back into huge errors. That was where he's been falling off in the last two runs. He's held onto it this time. Front one. Oh. Look at these back-to-back -back tricks, Tony. Oh, that's a run that's going to be tough to beat. Now, what Pedro needs, because he's fallen off on both of the other runs, he's going to need another run like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the whole strategy here. That could be the highest scoring run of the competition, but maybe he won't win because the average doesn't add up. Yes, Tony, you are correct. His run three is an 88.00, the highest score of the day. We are about to get underway with run number four. Corey Juno dropping in. One of the most consistent youngsters out there. Huge oh. front side air. Wow, he missed that on the last run and almost missed it on this run. Really squatting out of that. There it goes, the blunt side. Seemed like he got a, a few more tiles in that time. Yeah, it was a good recovery. I don't think he planned to do that blunt side right away after the other one, but he kind of got lost in the shallow end. But, ooh, big melon five. He's just saving this run with some squats, but uh, it's coming together. I mean, this is the run that he's got to put it together. Fourth and final. Going for a Christ air there. There we go. Looks like kind of a 360 hurricane. Holding on Whoa. for dear life for this run. Corey Juno. His score is going to be an 84.17, which he will remain in the fourth position. Right now, we're going to throw it over Tom Shah, 15 years old. Currently sitting in the number one position. Can he hold it from Chris Russell and Pedro Barros? He's had some solid runs so far, Tony. And this looks like it's going to be another one. Look at that. He's just a machine of tricks here. Heel flip Indy. You can really tell he's been practicing at this pool. Oh, no. Getting stuck on the coping there. And that's that's one of the risks of, uh, of pool skating. You know, you get stuck in the pool coping where there's ridges in between, and you got to be sure you power through them. That's not going to help his score at all, Tom Shire. He has an overall score of 86.84 as Chris Russell is back in. He's borrowed someone else's skateboard. <laughs> I was going to say. And he is going for it. He really should be kind to whoever board he borrowed <laughs> and not break that one as well. I don't think he cares at this oh, point. Oh, wow. Huge Miller flip there, forcing it in. Absolutely putting everything into it. The crowd loves it. Chris Russell doing it for Hermosa Beach. And his overall score? He's going to be an 85.83, but it is going to leave him in the number two position. Omar Hassan telling people to move back again. He wants more space. He is not a little guy. And he is hard as nails. Here he goes. Front side air over the hip. It must be really distracting, wanting to direct traffic before you drop in. <laughs> it's not bothering him whatsoever. And it looks like Omar has a line that he wants to get done here. Ooh, fast punt to fakie. Kind of playing it safe here in the square, but... Uh, he can throw a couple more tricks in there. It'll still be a good run. Oh, there you go. Feeble around the corner. Holding on to that. Switch stance pump around that tight corner. Jumping off. 
He is a crowd favourite, Omar Hassan. His overall score, it's going to put him in sixth position, is an 81.50 as the Danish destroyer, Rune Glyphberg, drops in. He's going to need to hold it together here, Tony. So he gets two big runs and unfortunately stepping off that huge front side air. Yeah, these guys, they really push the height limits for this size pool. And uh, that's about as high as you're going to get right there with that front side air. And that really decreases your landing zone. So it looks like Rune knew he was going to hang up and he had to throw it away. Rune's going to stay in seventh position, but this is what it comes down to. Can Pedro Barros hold it together? He needs one more run to average out the score. Can he take that number one position off Tom Shah as he rolls in right now? And uh, we know there's no holding back at this point. Giant Melon 540 almost landing on the bottom. It seems like that was two, three foot bigger than he's done all day. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell it, it doesn't matter where he lands on the wall. He's going to keep his speed up. What's he going for here? Oh, going for a transfer. <laughs> Have you ever seen that before? I mean, we've seen people consider it. We've seen people kind of test it, but no one really going for it. No one's really committed on that before. No. Well, I, I mean, rarely does anyone actually make it with their body over to the other ball. So um, that was brave. That was a brave attempt. Overall score for Pedro is an 85. Not going to affect his third position as Bucky Lasek drops in and unfortunately comes off early. That is going to end his campaign here at the Vans Pool Party. After the decade that I've seen Pedro skate in pool contests, I know that he's not happy with the third position, but look what he's going for here, Tony. This has never been done before. And it takes so much speed and so much effort to try to clear that for two completely vertical walls. Transferring that is... is uh, there's a tricky landing zone. It's a matter of speed. And we've never really seen anyone clear it just with their body. Tristan Rennie, the reigning champion of the Vans Pool Party 2014, dropping in for his last run. 50-50 around the corner. Tristan knows it's got to be now or never if he's going to get stay on the podium this year. He's really got to bring it home right now. In the shallow end, backside Ollie. What's he going to need to pull together, Tony? Well, definitely more tricks because there's a lot of setups going on here. A lot of 50s, a lot of little errors. And uh, he's got a, he needs a couple of heavy moves here if he's going to. It doesn't up the seem score. like this is going to be the run for him. Looks Whoa. like at this position, he is going to stay in fifth and the winner of the Vans pool party this year for the first time is Tom Shah. What an amazing feat by Tom. You can tell he's obviously been uh, really pushing himself to skate pools. Yeah, he's definitely been working on it and uh, it shows. And he, he brings his vert skills in, he brings his mega ramp skills in, he's got all the spins and he's got the transfers. So Tony, we have the final results. Pedro Barros in third, Chris Russell in second and the champion of the Vans pool party Tom Shah for the first time. Right now, it doesn't look like Pedro is done. Is he about to make history right now? <laughs> it, by the look of his face, yes, absolutely. Look at how much speed he's going to have to get here. I mean, it looks like he's got to have a perfect landing on this setup right here. Tony, talk us through trying to do this right oh, now. That's oh, that's it! Unbelievable! First time in history, Pedro Barros, the Brazilian, has done it, look at the crowd. Many have tried, a lot of people talked about it, and it's finally happened, and what a height too. I mean, that was, that was a huge error. What's the degree of difficulty trying to do this, coming in like that? Well, when, you, when, you're, when you're approaching a vertical wall from an angle like that, you have very little landing room, but Pedro, he sees it, he feels it, and he makes it happen. It seems like he's back wheels on that one. He had to wrench over just to get it back in and miss the coping. Yeah, that is that is a difficult angle to be working with. And uh, wow, that's, that's incredible. The Brazilian Pedro Barros makes history here at the Vans Pool Party 2015. But right now we have the champion 
with Tina Dixon. Well, Tom, you had that huge score on that first run. What kind of momentum did you have at that time? Um, I was just trying to keep up what I was doing and just hopefully try to do a better run or the same. <laughs> well, and you kept building. Just talk about the trick selection throughout your run. Um, I just kind of want to keep it consistent, stuff I could do. And then if I made that, just kind of push the limits and see what else I could try. But the competition in the field wasn't letting you win easily, especially Pedro Barros. What were you thinking about those runs? Oh, everyone was killing it. It was crazy. It's, it's the funnest contest that, I mean, ever. It's Everyone loves it. The crowd's insane. And it's just the vibe's crazy. And everyone kills it when they skate. It's, it's insane. Well, and finally getting a first here, what does this mean to you? Uh, <laughs> I can just kind of relax. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just so stoked. I don't know what to say. Well, it's a big contest. Congratulations. Enjoy this, guys. Congratulations to Tom Shah on his win. But our Red Bull signature moment has to go to Pedro Barros. Always a crowd favourite. Pedro came out and delivered an explosive performance with speed and style. Pedro attempted to cap off an amazing run with a transfer over the nine foot, nine inch transition between the bowls, a feat that had never been done before. Although he fell short during competition, the Brazilian was not deterred. And after a few more attempts with an entire crowd on their feet and cheering him on, Pedro Barros cleared the transition for the first time in history. With that, we give him the Red Bull signature moment. Tina Dixon is with him now. Well, Pedro, people will be talking about this night for a very long time, especially that transfer there. You kept going for it and you kept going for it. Talk about the drive. Uh, first day I got here for practice, I live in Brazil. Omar just called it out and he's like, you gotta do this transfer. And I always wanted to do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it in the finals. I was straight qualified to the finals. So I felt like I kind of needed to do something different. And the whole contest went on. I had one run left. And then I was like, should I just get a full run and try to win this contest? Or should I just try that trick? I wanted to try the whole event. And I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. And I went for it. And I was like, whoa, this is way harder than I actually thought. And people were just amping me, and I was like, I got to do this. I've I got to do this for me, first of all, and for everybody that's here and is amping me and is really wants to see it. And then ended up, Rune started amping it up, and Boya came out and pulled it out too. So it was amazing. I'm super happy. For me, this is more than any victory. Well, and to finish off with that transfer, I think you left everyone's jaws out there on the floor. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm happy everybody got to see that and I'm happy I did it for myself and I'm sure today I'm going to sleep well. Congrats, Pedro. It was a show. What an amazing day of skateboarding, Tony, and we made history also. That was amazing. Congrats to Tom Shar and to Chris Miller on the Legends event, and, uh, but really the big winner today was Pedro. That's the 2015 Vans pool party. I'm going to throw it to Sal Masekela in the studio. Thank you, Corbs, and thanks to all of you for joining us at the 2015 Vans Pool Party. A real party. Congratulations to Chris Miller winning a record ninth title. And Steve Caballero and Eric Nash rounding out the podium in the Legends class. And then in the pros, 15-year-old Tom Shar with his first win, followed by Chris Russell and Pedro Barros rounding out that podium. But how about Pedro's history-making first ever transfer here at the Combi Bowl? That is going to be talked about for decades. Incredible. We will see you next time.